This is certainly a feature match I've ever seen. When Shaheen Cerrone, a man that has four invitational top eights, but hasn't been able to get the win against a man who does have an invitational win this year. Eric Smith won in Somerset, New Jersey, and he is playing Punishing Jund. He started 6-0. You've got, you've got Esper Mage himself, Shaheen. Of course he's playing Esper Stoneblade. What, what, what else could he play? <laughs> but this is a pretty tough matchup for him. Jund actually lines up pretty well against Esper Stoneblade. Yeah, well, Shaheen does have Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls is one of those cards that's uh, you know pretty good against Jund. But yeah, I agree with you. There's, it's, it's hard to kind of combat all the cards that you're dealing with, like Punishing Fire. Um, Abrupt Decay is very good against uh, Stoneforge Mystic, obviously. Um, and then Liliana the Veil, that's a, a really problematic card, particularly when Jun can cast it on turn two with Deathrite Shaman. GJ is going to come down on Tarmogoy. If it's going to get equipped, Shaheen's going to play a Plains, but can he deal with the large creature and equipment right now? He does have an intuition, it looks like, in his hand, so um, not sure what three cards he can get. He does have Engineered Explosive as an answer, Vindicate, um, and then his own Jete, but again, the new legend rule kind of doesn't make that a removal spell anymore. It could be maybe a triple sword is what he's going for, and that's exactly so what he's yeah, going to do. So yeah, he's going to go for three swords here. He doesn't have three ways to kill a Jete. Shane with the mismatching artwork on the swords. Come on, clean it up here, Saran. You've been playing Esper forever. This is, <laughs> this is unacceptable for me. He was got the beta lands and then <laughs> mismatching swords. Shaheen! So Shaheen does have a Lingering Souls in his graveyard. Unfortunately, not very effective against Tarmogoyf, uh, let alone Tarmogoyf equipped with the Jete. Yeah. So um, Shaheen's kind of on the back pedal, pedal right here. M top deck Jace would be pretty good. Yeah, not so bad. What is it? There's a Marsh Flats? There's it's a Supreme, Supreme Verdict, Verdict. Okay. so that's a start. That I'm not sure. It looks like Eric might have two cards left in his hand. Yeah. So Supreme Verdict starts out getting the job. He um, can flashback Lingering Souls right now, too, if he wants to. Yeah. It looks like he opted not to, however. Yeah, it looks like he passed the turn. I think maybe Eric oh no. a little so bit prematurely. Okay. Looks like they were uh, playing a little quickly there. So he did flashback Lingering Souls. Eric does have, it looks like, an Abrupt Decay. The Pyroblast, maybe? Well, well, I'm not sure he has another creature. That's what there. I was going to say. I think the thing that he doesn't have is another creature, which is the problem here for the Invitational winner. Sarani going to draw a card. Yeah, so uh, Shaheen has a number of good draws here, but he, oh, Vin thoughts he's here. So that's going to deal with the Pyroblast, likely. Let's see. Kay. I think he, he might take out the Pyroblast just because he really he wants to be able to um, top deck a Jace. So yeah, with two Abrupt Decays, I imagine. Oh, wow, no. Wow, I'm a little bit surprised by that one. So he has taken the Abrupt Decay. Maybe he just doesn't care about Pyroblast. How many Jaces does he have in his deck? Uh, he has three Jace the Mind Sculptors okay. in his deck, so... Oh, Dark Confidant. Uh, so good top deck creature there for Eric. And uh, oh, oh, wow. Well, he has an abrupt, but he can't cast abrupt decay. Yeah. Whoa. No, but he has the, he has the Jete. So the, he has, still has one counter on the Jete. So he could kill the Lingering Souls token. Okay. So the, lingering, the, the Jete won't get active yet, but he can re-equip. But he still has the abrupt decay in his hand. So yep, looks like Dark Confidant will be able to get through here. There's a Wooded Foothills and draws a Tarmogoyf. There's a Tarmogoyf. So yeah, Eric... Uh, Looks like he's back in the driver's seat here. We can just abrupt decay the token yep. and attack in here. In comes Bobby. Get two counters. Now he can commit. Let's see if he wants to commit another Goyf to the board, or is he afraid around, uh, of a second Supreme Verdict? Nope. Does not care. And that is going to do it. So Eric Smith is going to tie this matchup up between him and Shaheen Cerrone, punishing Jund and Esper Stoneblade are going to go to a third and final one here between the two players. So interesting stuff. Let's take a look at the sideboards here, my friend. Uh, you've got Shaheen in front of you. He knows he's playing against punishing Jund at this point. What can you do to turn things around? Um, like you said, this matchup is very difficult, and there's not many cards that Shaheen has in his sideboard. I mean... His sideboard is geared towards beating combo because generally Esper Stoneblade has a tough time against combo decks. So uh, you could see that Shaheen kind of uh, took note of that with his sideboard. He's got two copies of Cabal Therapy, three Surgical Extractions, two Spell Pierce, one Force of Will, one Blue Elemental Blast, two Engineered Plague, uh, an extra Supreme Verdict he can bring in, two Notion Thief. Uh, there's not much he has against Jund, really. Um, obviously Supreme Verdict can come in. We saw that there. Cabal Therapy, might m he might want to bring in Cabal Therapy just as a way to, to go after cards like Tarmogoyf and all of the reactive spells that Eric might have after board. Um, also works well with Lingering Souls, obviously. Surgical Extraction coming in as a way to deal with Punishing Fire. Um, but beyond that, there's the, uh, the, the problem with Shaheen's strategy is that the, the cards he has against Jund are very reactive. He doesn't have that 
really proactive, powerful punch card that you can bring in that can lock up games for you for specific matchups. Uh, it's a lot of just defensive cards and cards that you need in order to combat the really hateful cards that are coming in from Eric's deck. Yeah. Well, speaking of hateful cards, he's got a few. We saw Pyroblast in the last game. He's got three copies of those. Two copies of Surgical Extraction, a Pithing Needle, a Scavenging Goose, two copies of Duress, two Ancient Grudge, a Graft Digger's Cage, and Umazawa's Jate, which we did see in the last game, and two copies of Golgari Charms. So he's got a lot of options here. Um, you know, does he bring on Golgari Charm against a deck that has Lingering Souls? Maybe yes, maybe no. GTA obviously quite good, and we saw it win him that last game. Could bring in some number of Ancient Grudges, because he knows that Shaheen has GTA of his own. And then, of course, three copies of Pyroblast to counter Jace's and other uh, blue cards that he deems appropriate. So a lot of options here for Smith and his Jun deck. Again, we just saw Taya Steele playing Jun. She was also 6-0, so maybe Jun was a good choice for this tournament. Well, there's a lot of, y you have a lot of ways to deal with True Name Nemesis, which I think is part of the appeal of this deck. Um, you, you have cards like Liliana Veil, vale, obviously, but you also have Golgari Charm. Um, you could also play Toxic Deluge if you want. And, uh, you know, and obviously, you know, it's never going to be that bad against Combo because you're going to have Thought Seize him to Torak. So it's, it's just one of those fair decks that you has a way to deal with True Name Nemesis. Sure. Um, but in general, though, uh, you know, I st I'm still in the camp that it's difficult to beat True Name Nemesis unless you play your own True Name Nemesis. Yeah, I'm with you on it's that one. Just, Trust me. You know, it, it seems like you can, but in theory... I think it's it's very it's it's it works in theory, but it's difficult in practice. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised too to see Shaheen playing, you know, lingering souls as opposed to Trinity Nemesis, and he's got the intuition package and all that good stuff, and he's going to take a mulligan here down to at least six cards. But I'm a little bit surprised to see lingering souls showing up to the party here today. Well, well I think part of it is his plan is basically li lingering souls is is a lot more effective against these types of decks because obviously you have Golgari Charm to deal with True, na uh, True Name Nemesis. Golgari Charm not nearly as effective against Lingering Souls. Yeah. So I think Shaheen's plan actually kind of works out against decks like this, decks like Bug. Um, I think I'd rather have Lingering Souls at this point um, against decks like that, just because, you know, obviously they have a lot of answers. But I'm with you. I think True Name Nemesis is just so good that I wouldn't want to play it, wouldn't want to not play it. I think I, 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 I like having maybe one, maybe two copies of Lingering Souls, but I wouldn't play zero True Name Nemesis. I think it's just two. It's one of those oops, I win cards like we yeah. were talking about, you know? And you want to have the ability to just get a free win. Yeah. And definitely in a tournament that's as difficult as this one. You just, uh, I drew True Nemesis, you lose now. Ex especially if you can go turn one thoughts, he's turn two Stoneforge for Jete, turn three Nemesis. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are certain decks that just lose to that. Yeah. Jun being one of them. <laughs> yeah, that, that is one that definitely counts. You see a Ponder here. Shaheen kept a one lander, I believe. He's going to keep the card on top and pass the turn. Smith is going to draw. He'll play a Verdant Catacombs and pass. Sarani does have a second land. It's a Caracas, and now there's a Stoneforge Mystic. So he's getting started in a nice way here. He gets to search. We'll see if it's going to be a Jite or a Batter Skull and move forward accordingly. Yep, and it is Batter Skull, so now Eric's going to have to really find an answer to that Stone Forge right away. He does have two copies of Angel Grudge in his sideboard, which I'd imagine he brought in. Yeah, you see the one right at the very bottom of his deck. He's going to search out a Bad Lance. It feels like maybe a Lightning Bolt's going to show up here in a minute. Maybe. So Shaheen looks like he has one copy of Indelicate, three copies of Snapcaster Mage, uh, four Stone Forge Mystic. Uh, those Pyroblasts are going to be pretty effective at stopping Jace, but beyond that, it's like... Not that great against Shaheen. Let's see. It looks like Eric has a Wasteland. He's going to go after the land here. Does he have a Lightning Bolt? He does not. Does Shaheen have a Shaheen does. Land? It looks like he did draw a land there. So. Oh, what a master. Wow. So we're going to sack. And yes, it looks like Shaheen's going to be able to activate the Stoneforge Mystic um, and get that Batter Skull in play. Eric did not have a removal spell for it. Let's see if he has a removal spell for the Batter Skull. Does he have an Ancient Grudge in his hand? Not yeah. sure. So you see a Pyroblast couple copies of that. Got a Bloodbraid Elf, but he's a long ways away from there. And does have a Dark yeah. Confidant, too. And, you know, that's the problem with a card like Pyroblast against Esperblade, is that sometimes it just sits in your hand and does nothing. Obviously, Jace the Mind Sculptor is one of those important cards that you have to deal with, but uh, Stoneblade can just beat you without even ever playing a blue spell, yeah. <laughs> as we're just going to see. You know, good old Stoneforge Batter Skull. And again, <laughs> yeah. Eric had to tap out here, so now, uh, you know, Shaheen can cast some blue spells and get him to resolve. And that's exactly what he's going to start off with the brainstorm. You see, he finds a polluted delta, lingering souls, and a stoneforge mystic. So he's going to put two back. He's going to make it a perfect brainstorm with the fetch land. And we could even see him simply go sword to plowshare your bob, keep attacking, and show exactly why this is one of the most powerful decks in the format. Because even though he had to keep 
would look to be a tough, you know, questionable one lander. Yep. He's worked his way out of it really well because Ponder and Brainstorm, they do that. Yeah. And he's going to deal with the Dark Confident right away. Doesn't really care about committing a second Stoneforge Mystic. He just wants to make sure that Eric doesn't draw out to the Batter Skull. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a Wooded Foothills. So Wooded Foothills come down. Again, no Ancient Grudge here. So Batter Skull um, threatened to, to win this game for Shaheen. Shaheen's going to sack here. Let's see what he gets. Looks like he's in another island, so he's protecting himself from Wasteland. Which I like. That like Especially yes. if he has no black cards in doesn't his hand. Yeah, doesn't need black. Um, doesn't have access to double white, which, again, would only really matter if he had to cast Supreme Verdict, which I don't think he cares about right now. Yep. Takes a draw step wow. here. Cracked it into another his Another good card. There's a Brainstorm. And they're going to see a Pyroblast yeah, that's, stop That's it. worth countering. Especially because he's got two of those in his hand. So... Swings over for five again. We're going to see another Stoneforge. Yep. And it looks like we're going to get a Jete here. I'm not sure. Yeah, it doesn't look like Shaheen has another piece of equipment, like a sort of fire and ice or something. So we'll probably see a Jete come. It's funny. People's people's opinion on, on Stoneforge Mystic has come and gone. Everyone says it's great. And some people are like, ah, it's terrible. You can't get Battle Skull and play in time because combo decks just kill you. Well, when you're playing fair matchups, this card is unbelievably powerful. Yeah, it's 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 basically demonic tutor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with legs. It's and absolutely crazy. And you know, we talked about this earlier, it just makes true name nemesis I feel like made this card so much better mm -hmm. because the fact that you can get a Jete now, um, it just you don't need to get those cards stuck in your hand anymore. Well there's Blood Braid. Here's trying to save oh. Ancient Grudge is good. All right. All right. And so he's and he's got the flashback for the for the Jete too. So he is yeah. back in wow. the game. Great, great flip there. A great cascade there <laughs> for Eric. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kenny, yeah, so oof, doesn't draw a fourth land, so he can't cast Jete and equip it and deal with the Blood Braid. All so right, it looks well. like we're just going to see a Lingering Souls here. And m it might be enough. You know, Lingering Souls, flashback Lingering Souls. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a black mana. Oh, well, we you were talking about that. <laughs> you thought it might be enough until Eric Smith threw a card for the oh, turn. Oh, goodness, not a Jete. <laughs> <laughs> so not only does he have a Jete and he can equip it this turn, he could also f has a land... So if he needs to search out uh, a, a, a Badlands or a Taiga to flash back the uh, a, a, uh, Ancient Grudge to deal with the Jete, he could also Pyroblast the Jace if Shaheen tries to yep. play that next turn somehow. So Eric Smith here, great, great few draws. Oh, he's <laughs> coming back. He's climbing that mountain. He's going to equip the Bloodbraid Elf. He's going to get in here. I, I assume Shaheen is going to double block here. Yeah, so he'll trade with the Bloodbraid Elf with the two tokens. Two, co two counters will go on the Jete, excuse me. And we'll see exactly how he wants to progress moving forward. Does he want to kill Stoneforge Mystic now? Does he want to just leave the two counters on there? He does have a copy of Golgari Charm in his hand. So, yeah, those spirit tokens, those got to go, baby. Yeah. It's, I, I wonder if... Um was the attack maybe oh, a little so premature? He okay, he's got a follow-up. Okay, I was going to okay. say, was the attack maybe a little bit premature? If maybe? I didn't, yeah, because if I didn't have another creature, especially if I have a Golgari Charm in my hand, maybe uh -huh. I just equip and pass. But he just wanted to get those tokens. Plus, he has another creature out there, so... Eric in pretty good shape here. He does expose himself a little bit to a top deck Jace. But uh, again, Shaheen, or he doesn't know that Shaheen doesn't have a Jace or a land. Yeah. So um, looks like we're just going to see an Engineer exposed e for, for one. one. I like this play here by Shaheen. He's going to just try to press advantage and make it so that Smith can't come back. He needs Smith to, you know, kind of brick off a bunch here. But, wow. I mean, that can happen. So Liliana the Veil off the top is an interesting draw. So now he can kill Stoneforge with the Jete and then make him sack another one if he wants. He's just going to pass the turn back with the Jitte available. Shaheen draws a black spell, not black land, so he's going to attack the Liliana with a Stoneforge Mystic. Will Smith use that Jitte? Yeah, it looks like Jitte the will. Is he's yes. going to protect that Liliana, obviously. And now Lingering Souls will come down, but he has the Golgari Charm for it. Mm -hmm. So now he could, uh, looks like he has, yep, we're going to uptick it, discard a land. And are do we going to cast the turn? Do you want to cast the charm now to try to play around potential counter magic? Do you not ca care if it gets countered? Yeah, let's. We're all, yeah, we're, he's certainly casting Golgari Charm. So I think you might want to just cast it. Because Esper Stoneblade does. Th some decks do play counter spell. Um, a lot of them do play one counter spell. So you don't want to lose your Liliana right here. I think you just cast it when uh, Shaheen's tapped out. But. It does resolve for him, so Liliana will stay in play. And it doesn't look like Shaheen really just has anything else. Eric's going to be in top deck mode, but he's got a Liliana and a Jete in play. And Shaheen just doesn't have any action going. And he doesn't have a black mana to flash back those Leering Souls. He so chose to get basics. That was his option. Get, yep, he chose to play around Wasteland. And it looks like it's gonna, uh, it's gonna, he's going to pay for it now. 
He could cast Intuition for three Black Sources. But Boy, uh, that he, would be rough. He won't be able to flash back the Lingering Souls this turn. I actually think that's what he's sitting here considering right now, is if I do that, what are the ramifications of that decision? And it looks like he is going... Oh, man, he looks like he wants to pull the trigger on that so bad. He could, yeah, he could just get three sack lands. The question is, does he do it main, or does he want to wait? I think you just cast it so you can get the land to play right now. Oh, it looks like he's... Oh, so it did get Pyroblasted, so okay. it doesn't even matter. Yeah, it doesn't even matter, okay. So perfect turn for Eric. We're gonna have a brainstorm here. So Eric just ticked up. Eric just ticked up the Liliana. She didn't discard thoughts. He's Eric played a land, so he didn't even discard. So Eric is in top deck mode. Except he's got the Planeswalker in play. But brainstorm can certainly undo some things because you see a disenchant there in Serrani's hand. He also has a fetch land. He's got a ponder. He's trying to figure out exactly. Okay, how am I gonna put everything back? How do I move forward? How the heck do I beat this Planeswalker? Well, thankfully he drew a, a, a sack land, so he can get a swamp or a black source and flash back those lingering uh -huh. souls and start pressuring that Liliana. So pretty good draw for Shaheen, but and it I looks like he's going to pass. I like this, I because, like this. Yeah, because Liliana's obviously going to tick up, and he needs to get that GTA off the table. Now here's a Tarmogoyf. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, that's not a bad draw. Yeah, he's doing okay, because he's got yeah, this doesn't matter. grip. Yep. And now that, there goes the GTA. So now all he has to beat is a, uh, I say all, but all he has to beat is a Tarmogoyf and a Liliana. Another, black, another land, another sack land would be great. He can flash back both Lingering Souls. You see Shaheen rub his hands together saying, all right, I'm getting back into this thing. Yeah. I can beat that Liliana. Yeah, Eric's only at five. <laughs> S and, That's and Shaheen's true. at 21. So uh, uh, Shaheen's st not in bad shape despite some really, really good top decks by Eric. If Shaheen can just, um, looks like he's going to flash back a Leering Souls. He's going to start with Ponder. Gr another great he kept draw. That on, he kept that on top of his deck. Now there's a Jace. There's a Jitte. And, and there's a Souls. Ooh, and a Jitte, yep. So and he's going to... Looks like he's going to draw the Lingering Souls and cast it. Yep. Or no, he's, he's going to flash it back. Okay. And I actually kind of, I actually kind of like this too. Because plays around Thoughtseize. Uh huh. Thoughtseize duress. Uh, him to Torak. Tarmogoyf so. coming in. Sheen says, "Okay, I'll go to 16." And if, and, and if he has to discard a card to Ling uh, Liliana, it's yeah, it might be as well Souls be Lingering stuff. Souls. Perfect. Uh, oh, but he's going to make him sack instead. Okay. And he's going to immediately put that shit in place. Oh no, he's not. He's got. Oof. He's Jace the Mind Sculptor is going to bounce Tarmogoyf here. Yep. And Eric Smith is in uh, all of a sudden. Boy, this game, this game has, has shifted back and forth and back and forth. But now Smith draws a Wasteland, so he can cut off Shaheen's Black Source. So that's gone. And that's actually a big draw. But now he needs to take care of that Jace. And he has another Liliana. Okay. So that's good. He can, he can play the Liliana and force Shaheen to lose his token. He'll lose, his own, he'll lose the Liliana in play. But okay, and that's actually what he's going to do. Liliana's going to go down, lose the token, play the Tarmogoyf, yeah. pass the turn back. That's why he, c he couldn't uptick the Liliana mm -hmm. that was in play because he didn't want to discard the Tarmogoyf. Well, time for Jace to take over. Brainstorm. Who's got the better Planeswalker? We're going to find out here in a minute. As Serrani is going to resolve a Brainstorm from Jace the Mind Sculptor. He's got a Lingering Souls. He's got a Tundra. He's got a Brainstorm. A no discard black spell, no black source, GTA as well. And you see that he's setting it up so he can just play GTA off the top, into play, equip, and attack you. So there is your Tundra, we think. Ah, maybe not. A Brainstorm now. Okay. One, two, three. Vindicate among the cards. But again, no black source. Wants to get some, he wants to get that Inquisition in his hand so he can discard it to yep. Liliana. So he can play a land, pass play Lingering Souls. Souls. Discard Inquisition, draw GTA, equip, attack you. Yep. Good play. Good play. So let's see what Eric drew. Oh, just the land. Now he's going to uptick. Mm -hmm. Uptick. Shaheen just discards the Inquisition. Doesn't matter. Tarmogoyf coming in a Jace. Easy block there for Serrani. And immediately there is, I believe he keeps the GTA. He's going to brainstorm first. Okay. He has a Vindicate. I think maybe he wants to Vindicate that Tarmogoyf potentially. I think he wants to Vindicate Tarmogoyf. Or does he? Oh, he has a Snapcaster too. He's got all the options now. I'm surprised he hasn't GTA'd yet. I, I don't think he has to GTA necessarily. Let's see. It looks like we're going to have a... Yeah, attack Liliana down okay. to one. Uh, and okay. pass the turn. I think he wants to... Yeah. Draw steps. Sword plow step. Plow it then. Okay. So, yep, he's going to lose his Jitte here. But uh, I, I think he's okay with that. He doesn't need... Uh, uh oh. oh. <laughs> Let's see here. Things can turn in a minute. There's a Dark Confidant. Right, that's, that's, not bad. that's not bad. He's going to lose his Jitte here. But he still has... So he might lose the Snapcaster too, unless Eric decides not to attack with Bloodbraid. I think he's got to attack. I think Bloodbraid has to go after the Jace here. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Yep. So, so there's an easy trade. Pass the turn back. Shaheen quickly draws. Brainstorm. Can't Once. cash. Okay, ah, so he does a have a Black Lance. Source for the Vindicate now. So now Jace can safely go back. He's got a Black Source. 
He's pretty sure of himself with the brainstorm. Sacrifice the Marsh Flats, vindicate that. And Liliana's going to go down to one token uh -huh. again. So eventually, <laughs> it took a little <laughs> while, but Shaheen uh, looks to be in pretty good shape now. <laughs> Jason play, another, play, bl another blood braid play. can change everything. A blood braid can change everything, yeah. But let's see, is Eric going to be able to be a little another good draw? Abrupt, Abrupt decay, decay, take care of that. That's not bad. Tough but kick. here's the problem: one of these planeswalkers is better than the other. Yeah, and again, Shaheen can still flash back the lingering souls in his graveyard. So, uh, and he did draw a counter spell too, so to prevent any uh, top decking from Eric. So he's going to play that Marsh Flats there. He's got swords in his hand. He's playing pretty quick here because you guys can see the clock in the middle. We're under 30 seconds. Yeah, but I think Shaheen's in good shape. I think he should be able to win in four turns here. Looks like he's going to flash back twice, and he still has mana up for counter spell. So four tokens in play. Eric's at nine. Tarmogard comes down. Well, the card in Shaheen's hand, he actually put the counter spell back. He has swords oh, okay. in his hand. That's so his last card. In his hand. So now Tarmogoy from Smith and uptick Liliana. So discard the swords. Actually kill your Tarmogoy from response. So... Tarmogoyf is big, but Shane's got some work to do, and he doesn't have a ton of time to do it. And so Liliana's going to bite the dust. So is he going to Fate Seal or Brainstorm? So it looks like he's going to Brainstorm instead. Let me tell you something about Shaheen. Never Fate Seals. <laughs> ever. Actual ever. Casting Brainstorm is fun. I was doing a match with Martel in Indianapolis uh, where we were watching Shaheen play against Ross Merriman. We were like, I think it's safe to Fate Seal now since Ross has nothing. And, you know, it's like this top decks are really living, and Shaheen's just like, Brainstorm, Brainstorm again. What do you think he's going to do with this, Chase? I would bet it all that he Brainstorms, even though he just got done Brainstorming. It looks like Absolutely. we're going to another Brainstorm. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't Fate Seal with Chase. And we've actually talked about this because he rewatched the match. He's like, no, I don't ever Fate Seal, man. <laughs> I don't ever Fate Seal. So here yeah, we give go. Me, give me three more. <laughs> he's always Brainstorming, baby. So he has uh, two plows, a surgical extraction. Let's see if he goes. Uh, if he so they're in turn zero uh -huh. right now. Is Eric Smith at 16? He is at 16 because that's swords. Oh. So Shaheen needs to find a way. And that's why uh, that might be part of the reason that he is brainstorming so much is because he needs to find a way to get this bad boy over with. Do so they have any? Oh, and I'm not sure if they have any extra time. Nope. Because they're in the feature match area. So they're look, on, yeah, they, they are, are on turn, turn zero. zero. So uh, Shaheen, I'm not sure. Yeah, he. I don't think uh, Shaheen's. Okay. Shaheen's gonna need like a batter skull here, I think. Yeah, if he goes batter skull, attack goes to twelve. Equip, two, three, four. So yeah, Shaheen's only gonna get two attacks here. I'm not sure he has enough to to finish it off. Yeah, because he's turned two. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think Shaheen can do enough. Oh no! And, a and punishing there's a punishing fire, fire too. He yeah, doesn't so have a grove, but Shaheen just doesn't have enough damage. And he was playing quickly, too. Yeah. And there's a surgical extraction that's going to take care of the groves. Now, unless these players have a time distinction, but again, we, they don't have it because we're being informed that, again, it, Shaheen is turn number two here. Time has been called. No extension, even though they didn't move over to the feature match. So we might see a draw here, yeah, man. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see the first draw. And we had, Smith, we had Smith at five match. life at one point, too. Yeah, all those swords. And I think maybe maybe Shaheen just wasn't cognizant of uh, – because, like – I. There, th he didn't really need to swords the Tarmogorp, yeah. to be honest. I Jace could have just taken care of it a couple times with bouncing it. I mean, looking back now, hindsight. He had tokens to block it if he wanted the Jace in play. Like, he had he had two Jaces, and he had another Jace in his hand, uh -huh. too. So it didn't really matter if the Jace died. Maybe uh, Shaheen just wasn't aware of how low Eric really was. Yeah. And yeah, because it, it, it definitely didn't seem like Tarmogorp needed to die. But uh, Yeah, I mean, this game had went through so many stages, right, where Shaheen was, like, easily winning, even though he kept a one-lander. And then Smith was coming back and easily winning. And then Serati was coming back and saying, hey, I'm easily winning. So now, you know, it looks like we're going to end up moving to a draw. So we'll see what, what ends up happening. But it looks like both players are going to end up at 